Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about lofting the longitudinals for a plywood boat and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Before we get going though, I've got another viewer t-shirt photo. This one here is Marty Shearman from Omaha in Nebraska. Marty actually made the effort to post this one in old school along with a nice letter, so thanks Marty, appreciate that. All right, we'll kick things off today by having another look at the plans. These are the six longitudinals I'm looking to make, and these are the four sheets of ply they're cut out from. Over on this sheet, we've got the measurements that we need in order to do this lofting to draw them up and eventually cut them. We only have to loft one set of these longitudinals, so three of them, because the others are just a mirror image. So we'll draw one out, cut it out, and then we'll use those to trace the second set here. Lofting is simply a process of taking a set of measurements and coordinates, marking them on the piece of plywood, then either drawing a straight line between the points, if it's a straight line, or bending a batten around those points in order to draw a curved line. Previously, we've just been tracing sections of timber out from full-size plans, but from now on, we're gonna be lofting them. You can see here, this corner's our datum point for all these measurements. So I'm gonna start with that as the corner over there and then we're gonna measure, we've got measurements down, measurements across, pretty straightforward. With all these points, because we have to bend a batten around, because it's a curve, where there's a point, I'm just gonna put a nail in, and that's what we're gonna be clamping our batten to. First measurement here is 210 millimeters down this edge of the plywood, then we come across the other edge of the plywood, 451 millimeters. When we get to there, we have to come down here, 364, and this is where I'm gonna put the first nail. Here's my 451 measured across this edge. I then put my square on here and measured out 364. I've then put the square on this edge and come across just to confirm we're still on our 451. Just to make sure that my square wasn't off this edge, that kind of thing. Just a good way to double check your measurements. You can see here that this line actually extends across this entire piece of ply. So really I can just mark one edge, mark the other edge, draw that straight line and we're done with that line. And in case you're ever wondering whether it's a really gentle curve or a straight line, it's good because if it is a straight line, the plans will tell you, so there's no doubt. Next point we need to measure is another 451 millimetres, so 902 total. All right, now we need to do a line perpendicular up this way because there's another cutout that goes here. Cutout comes up from this baseline here. This is actually a bit that gets cut out. This is the longitudinal itself. It comes up, it comes across, and then back down. This cutout we're making here is similar to the ones we had on the top of the bulkheads, those little slots. So it's designed to take a nine mil bit of ply. But when I spoke to Mark, he said, look, don't make it nine mil, make it 10, maybe even 11, because you do need that millimeter gap each side to get some epoxy in it. Can't be a tight fit, otherwise you'll never get the glue in. On the same line, Level with one edge of this cutout, we also have another data point for the curve at the top, so we'll put another nail there. This really is now the process for the rest of the mark. You kind of get the idea. What I'll do, I'll keep going, I'll keep measuring, and then when we're done, we'll get the batten out, and I'll show you how we draw this curve line. So here, we've got our baseline coming along, got our nails at various points, and we've also got these slots marked out. At the end here, the long tree gets cut along here, then across, and has a straight back. And this angle here is the angle of the transom. What it does say here though, is that the overall length of this longitudinal doesn't take into account the thickness of the transom, which I presume means, you know, you can make it whatever thickness you want, but make sure you take it off. So theoretically, we're gonna to need to cut 18 mil off the end here. I'm gonna leave this full length for now because I can always trim it off later. But for now, I'm gonna be a little bit paranoid and just leave it as full length so that I can confirm this actually is what I need to do for this boat. Now what we need to do is clamp a batten to all the nails and draw this curve line. Here this comes to a point against this line, so I'm just going to press it up against, put a nail pretty close, 
There we go. This all makes quite a nice arc along here. But when I get to the back here, kind of looks like it kinks out on that one. So I'm just going to confirm those measurements because that could well be wrong. I think if something looks wrong, well worth double checking. So you can see I've put the ruler at the correct measurement, so it's 10 mil out. But it goes to show how when you do lines like this, your eye can see straight away something's not right. So you've got to kind of trust yourself and recheck. So I'm going to move this nail 10 mil this way, and I think it'll look heaps better. All right, we'll mark this line, then we can take all these nails away. When you're doing these multi-sheet pieces, obviously it's very important the sheets are butted up nice and tight and square for the piece to be accurate. Traditionally in boat building, you would have an overlap as a bit of a scarf joint, but in this style of construction, we actually cut back here and do a butt joint, but we'll see that in detail later on. All right, that's K1. My job now is to go and do K3 and K2. You can see K3 has a datum mark here and on the sort of sheet here that shows us the bit supply, it shows that if we come 311 mils down here and start at this point, then this particular piece won't run into anything else. Then the other one, we're just doing hard against the opposite edge. This K3 longitudinal turned out to be a lot harder than the first one for a couple of reasons, I'll show you. First reason is, after doing this one for, you know, 30 minutes or whatever, your eye sort of gets in the habit of going to it. So I found myself accidentally reading measurements from here instead of here. So easy fix in that you could simply cut them out, photocopy them, cut them out, whatever, and just have the correct one in front of you. So I think that's not a bad way to go. The other thing that makes it a bit trickier is that this line here isn't the edge of the ply. It's a line here, 311 mils down, somewhere actually in the middle of this longitudinal. I was loath to draw it as a line on here because I didn't want to accidentally cut along it when I'm cutting out K1. Because of that, I had to add 311 millimeters to every measurement coming down. You kind of get it in the rhythm of it, but it certainly took me a lot longer than it did the first one. The last one's against the other edge of the ply, so I'm hoping that should be pretty straightforward again. All right, I've got them all marked up now. Once you're finished, I think it's a really good idea just to cast your eye over the whole thing. I actually noticed one line, or two lines, that were supposed to be quite parallel to each other and weren't. Things like that really jump out. It was only 10 mil out, but it's really clear that they're not as they should be. So I was able to remeasure, fix that, and I think we're good to go. Now I'm gonna grab a circular saw and a jigsaw. There's quite a few long straight cuts in this, so I'll use the circular saw for that, and then we'll use the jigsaw for everything else. It's occurred to me now I've gone to cut these out that I've actually drawn them on six mil ply, not nine mil ply. That's why you shouldn't do things when you're tired at the end of the week. But I'm not too worried. You make the second set by tracing the first set. So I figure for the sake of two bits of six mil ply, I'm gonna cut them out anyway, and then just use them as templates to mark them on the nine mil and cut them out again. But I'll keep going because what I can also do is sort of test fit them and make sure they're correct before I go and cut them out of the nine. So I'll push on, but something to be careful of. Obviously I wasn't. Running out of time to finish cutting them all tonight, but I'll show you one fitted in, just to give you an idea of what they're about. So each one runs this way, four and a half, the longitudinals, and they've also got their own groove here. So by the time you drop them into the bulkheads, drop them in here, and here, you can see how it starts to sort of square everything up and pull it all together. So eventually we'll have six of these all the way across, running all the way four and a half, then we can start wrapping the skin on the boat. These are a bit loose in here because it's six mil, not nine mil. So I'll cut these, get them all right. Then I'll cut them out of nine mil. And then next time we pick up, I'll show you how you glue them end to end. So you end up with continuous pieces rather than these 12 separate pieces we've got at the moment. Well, six, then we double them. All right, well, thanks for watching. Hopefully we will pick this project up again next week. I'm gonna try and sort of cut them out properly in my spare time. And then next time we film, we'll actually be showing that technique for butt joining them, which involves epoxying the edge, putting them together, and actually putting a fiberglass laminate. All right, well, until then, take care, and I'll catch you soon. See ya.